morning welcome guys today we are going to do it's called mount kenya circuit we are literally going round mount mount kenya it is the second highest mountain in africa it is one of the trips that we had announced to you guys that we are going to i'm live kenya this is patrick and behind me is adia Hi. yes we have one more car somewhere right in front of us we've never been been around Mount Kenya. This is our first time doing the circuit. We've never done it before. We are just going best of best off of um, just research. As usual, guys, come with us so that you can find out what happens around Mount Kenya. And we are so excited. So we begin our journey in Nairobi. Right now we are in. Uh, it's called Uhuru Highway. We are in Uhuru Highway. There's some jam. So if you've never watched any video from Kenya. Or if you've never been to Kenya, just know we have jam. <laughs> Traffic jam is a serious problem, especially in Nairobi. And what you see up there, that one is another another route. It's it's a toll route. Yes, we call it Nairobi Expressway. If you want to use to avoid the jam, the traffic jam, you have to pay some toll. So you there's there's some entry and exit gates that you can use to use those the road up here it's a very nice road but today we are just staying in this jam <laughs> Right now we are in Thika Road. Thika Road is still it's still in Nairobi, but we've already passed the Nairobi part. We are we are now in the Kiambu sector, Kiambu County rather. So like I always tell you guys, in Kenya we have really nice roads. If you are watching my video for the first time, you are in the right place. But if you usually watch my videos, you know how we do it. So this will be an entire circuit. We'll be going around all the towns that surround uh, Mount Kenya. Not all, but most of them. But if you look at the map, it's like we are going around Mount Kenya. But we'll also go to the northern side of Kenya, where it is usually a bit, a bit uh, dry. But that is the beauty of this trip, because you'll get to see Kenya in all dimensions the high the highlands the semi-arid areas everything the temperate side the plateau side you'll see everything the mountainous side you'll get to see everything so guys mount kenya circuit and here we go next time we tell you guys to join us just know when that day that date comes we will go whether there'll be one person whether there'll be a hundred people we will still go so let's take this journey and enjoy it. It's going to be a four day trip, four days, three nights. So you can imagine how long it is and it is packed with activities. 
like you all know I love churches and the architecture so I had to show you that one <laughs> in Kenya we are trying we are trying to make nice yeah, nice churches with nice architect architecture. So for the four days, we have so many activities. In fact, too many. But we intend to do all of them. It's going to be a very exciting journey. Uh, we've already taken this trip. We did a, pi a pilot survey, or it's called pre-visit to some places. Others we did not go to explore, but we just got there to inquire one or two things about it. And this is now the actual trip the actual actual trip and we're excited to show you guys let's go Laughing at this food. Okay, we are comparing uh, what we had. We, uh, this is chapati and some beef broth or beef soup. In Mo in uh, in Tanzania, we could have like two large pieces of meat here, but here it is it is basically soup. You know the soup that usually you put in a jerry can and then you heat it like this. It's that white. And then it will say that it is soup and herb. Look at the herb. This is the hub. <laughs> Enjoy your body being The soup was up really great. From eight, from eight, eight thirty a.m. to six thirty p.m. You know, in the night they are in the water. During the daytime, they are on land for basking. Mm -hmm. ah, yes. I told you, Costa Chuli, the Yes. Yes. So one of the people in the couples, na pala ni ko na busa na hindi niya kofan fo. It's <laughs> 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 There are four of them. Four of them. Yes. So after maybe three to four months, mm. actually they hatch, and then you fight for the crocodile since does not have a tongue. Mm -hmm. You try the mouth to carry the young ones using the mouth and taking the water, so that can be able to feed on small fish and small amphibians. Mm -hmm. So those ones are like the frogs. So when I'm conducting the cleaning here in the pod, those mm -hmm. frogs I get them in the bucket, and then I can balance them to the other place to the, those snakes there in the in the museum oh, okay yeah because snakes they don't do dead animals alive one they feed on rat frogs and also the lizards 
but for the log python we find it to feed with the rabbit a whole rabbit so that it can constitute and then it can feed on it okay. yeah so in terms of feeding once once a week they have what we call the metabolism so their digestion is somehow very slow so you, you feed this one once a week once a week once a week now I should practice oh <laughs> so, so their metabolism is very slow yeah so we do it uh, on sunday at four that when you come on sunday at four that you mm. find me here inside feeding them oh. yeah i feed them with the meat like for the chicken mm -hmm. for the goat how many per, per, how, how much meat do you give it like per crocodile so when we are at school we would say the crocodile feed five to seven but when you come to ground, things are very different. Mm -hmm. So, four of them, those are eight chicken. Mm -hmm. I just try every to have eight pieces. Mm -hmm. That one is like one chicken and a, and a half. Oh no, they're starving. Yes. No, imagine when you have this coolness, their digestion is like they have stopped. Do you know that the meat for the crocodile is edible? Yes. Yes, I want to introduce that here. Ah. See, my name is Dr. Mzuri. Kabisa? Kabisa. nyama ya crocodile. The white meat. Yeah, yeah. Including the porcupine. So for today, oh, for, I would like to try po porcupine meat. Very sweet because for the porcupine is a is a rodent, and then we are, we we learn something that it doesn't grow the spikes. I have been saying oh they have. I've seen spikes, that you know. it, does, it doesn't grow. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It does. It doesn't throw spikes. It sheds. It Be just sheds them. Because once the you attack are just it, like our hair, yes. Right? Once you attack it is when it sticks on your skin, but it doesn't like throw the spikes. The ones you see throwing the spikes are in movies. Now this is the, boy, this is the, this is the leopard tortoise. Okay, by the way, this one just looks like the leopard. You see the spots. You said how old is it? Thirty to forty years. Thirty to forty years. So we count, we count these stripes. No, uh -huh. that one we do with the young ones, but that one even I don't agree with it. Sometimes. Okay. And it's quite heavy. So they have a long lifespan. They stay for long. Generally they stay for 120, mm -hmm. but you find they go to 150, 200, at 300. Why? Ah. Make a support by us by our kuni pombe, <laughs> our kuni nyama. <laughs> <laughs> the hamster. Okay, it's cute. I've never. I, I, how come so it's, look, it's like I've never actually seen one. Oh, oh. So this is what they use. The, for this one is the one. one. Yes. yes. The one that usually just it, it goes round a, a, a wheel. Yes. An endless wheel. Hamster high. In, in so a grow cute. in a grow bigger than this. It's already out of this one. So pet it. Daddy, look at you. We must have a guinea pig. Guinea pig. Yeah. No, no. So so instead of hair, the their body grows the ton the spikes instead yes. of hair. Yeah. So what is carrying you? Are they said they have what you call the rattle, like for the puffer snake. So when our dogs or the leopard don't to attack the animal, to conduct the circuit of the heat, go to block the enemy. So when our dogs, they are fogged, mm. they don't have the mentality like for human to clear them away. So they made it it's impossible for them to get the animal, but they doesn't, they doesn't grow. All they do is shed. And then when they shed, they just grow with, with time and hold. Wow. Because they create a hole, they create a hole, they create a hole, they create a hole, they create Yeah, so this one is an ego, it flies higher and higher. So I just rescued down there. Oh, it is a rescued one? Yeah, because it was injured. Okay. Right now I have just kept it very well, it's very okay. We've started our day so well. Just in, have you seen that waterfall? So beautiful. It's just right next to the highway, but pe very few people really see it, and it's just magical. Eh? It's a small hike, but it's worth it. Very beautiful. And in this property, there is also this children's playground. You see that? Yeah. I think you can also be able to access all that. Eh? And I like the way I look on the camera. I'm glowing. So guys, hey, this trip has begun at a high. I'm on a high right now. So there are two waterfalls here. There is that one. It's called Chania Falls. And the river there is Chania, Chania River. Now we are going to the one called Thika Falls. So when you come to this property, you get to access two waterfalls. 
if you want to see the museum and the animals you pay another an extra 150 for adults so it is a uh, i think it's worth it it that, that is value for money and then the guide he's just the sweetest guy ever imagine he's a volunteer and as usual guys remember to always tip the guide the place is called blue post apparently it is a historical place it was uh, it was developed in 1902 so when you go to the museum you'll get to see the history uh, yeah there's a lot of history about how this place was it belonged to the colonial masters it has been handed over and it has it was it has been made into a business and now we are the beneficiaries of this so whenever you pass through the Tika, the, it's called Nairobi Tika Highway. Just ensure you pass by this place. Another hike. We've seen Chania Falls. The first one was Chania Falls. The second one was Tika Falls. Tika Falls. Yes. They are all in the same property. Mm -hmm. So whenever you pay your money, you will get value for your money. Okay. It's not easy that for you to get a place with two waterfalls, right? Yes, it's very rare. And, and Paul. Oh my God, our guide was just wonderful. the best. Guys, always remember to tip your guide. He's wonderful. Oh, he's so passionate about mm -hmm. tourism industry and we are so, so happy that he's the one who took us around here. So many nice stories. Uh, so our next destination is Muranga, Muranga Gorges. Gorges. Yes. So, so let's go. So let's go. And uh, what can you say about the place? It's awesome. Uh -huh. it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I would say it's underrated. It is so underrated, it's so underrated. And I don't think they do much marketing of this place. Yes, they don't do much marketing. But you need to come here. I hope this this video will make all of you guys to come to this place. Uh, yes. This is not sponsored. It is just our honest opinion. And by the these two rivers, the thick the thicka the thicka river and the Chania, Chania river, river, they join two. I didn't hear that. Yes, they, they joined to form one river uh -huh. somewhere down there. And remember, Chania River, I'm told it, it separates the two counties, Kirinyaga and Muranga. No, Kiambu and Muranga. Oh, it's Kiambu and, Mur and Muranga. Yes. Yes, so know that. Those are fun facts. Uh -huh. So let's go to Muranga Gorges. Muranga Gorges. So we are going to Sagan. It's, no, it's called Muranga. Muranga Gorges. It is in Sagana. But first, we pass through Thika Town to pick something and hopefully show you guys one or two things. But our main purpose is not to go to Thika, but to just pick something. Thika is mostly known for uh, pineapples and a lot of fruits. It produces a lot of fruits and, uh, and I think vegetables. But pineapple is the one that is more dominant because of Del Monte pineapple. Most of the canned pineapples we have in Kenya and the ones you export come from this side.
about to get off the main highway. The, this, this highway is called Tika Muranga. Meru Nairobi Highway. Embu Nairobi Highway. We are almost uh, in, in the next three kilometers. We'll be taking our left to branch so that we can go to Muranga Gorges. You have seen how nice our roads are. The Kenyan roads are so good, especially this road. This particular highway is so good. Finally in Muranga Gorges, it was formed by some sort of erosion and I think the guide will tell us more. Uh, when you come here, you'll get a guide, he'll show you different sections on where to go and we are glad we are here. We came here last time but we could not get in because it was quite late. There are quite many other smaller gorges but this is the main one. The other ones are in people's farms. So this one at least here, it's allowed for tourists and it's a bit safe. As you can see, it rained yesterday. So we're expecting some mud, that is why I've worn these shoes. Yeah, so let's get some history from the guide. Uh, Corrosion is an ancient, uh, Indian ancient kind of building. It uh, resembles the back of the sea over there. Where? Colosseum? Yeah, Colosseum. Oh no, we know we are not going to confidently. 1997-1998, it was formed as a, as, a, as a result of erosion. Yeah, erosion. Okay. Yeah. So it has been like that since then, although it keeps changing in terms of depth and shapes. Be okay, yeah. it when depends on the amount of water. Yeah. Or, wow, it actually looks like the Colosseum that you've said. Yeah. So this is how the corrosion happens. You can see the waterway when it rains and then it goes and corrodes. And you've said, what is the name of this clay? Yeah. Iritic and Cauronitic clay. Auritic and Cauronitic. Iritic yeah, and coronitic clay. Yeah. It is the one that is used in making in making the roof tiles. Yeah. Oh, okay. That is why it easily gets corroded. Sindio? Yeah. How can you compare this place with the Hell's Gate? Not Hell's Gate, Hell's Kitchen. They're very similar. Very similar, the, huh? The soil, maybe it's different. The color of the soil. The, the one in, in, in Hell's Kitchen had so many colors. We there was had, white, we, red. We had three layers. There was yellow. White, white, and red. Okay. Yeah. But here it's mostly. Yeah, it's is, most. Is this white or gray? It's gray. Is mostly gray, mostly sandy soil. By the way, Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen is in Malindi. Yes, Malindi on the coastal side of Kenya. Marafa. And uh, it is in a place called Marafa. Yes. It is a community-owned property, but they, you pay some fee for the tour guide. It is also very similar. It has a lot of corrosion like this. It is a very popular place where people like to come to go and see Malindi. And it's called as kitchen because it's very hot, especially during, at, mid, uh, at midday, at noon. But in this place, imagine this is noon. It is quite hot, but not as hot as Hell's Kitchen. So we're just comparing, but we are happy that for those who cannot access Hell's Kitchen, they can come here. It is actually a very big property, several acres. So we've come here to just see the whole corrosion and take photos. <laughs> we must take photos, you know, yeah, for remembrance and take a few videos to show you guys what you, you get when you come here.
Nadia, what's that? Yes, yes. Pilau. Pilau. How nice is it from salsa? Yes. Is it nice? It's okay. It's okay? Mm -hmm. Then there is pork chops. Pork and ugali. And then chips, chips masala. masala. And then an empty glass <laughs> for me. Jangwani Kam. Jangwani Kam. Their food is nice and the ambience is very beautiful. We are supposed to go down there to the waterfall, but hey, guys, we are very tired. The whole hiking yesterday, we slept for like, I personally slept for like one hour. Adia and Patrick, we slept for two hours. So we are very much exhausted. So we want to go all the way to Siolo, past uh, through Nakuru. Nanyuki. Nanyuki. I'm that tired. This is a very nice place for team building. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is kayaking, there is rafting, uh, there's, there's a lot of rapids there. So there is kayaking, there is uh, rafting, there is, they, they, I'm told there's something called plunging. You just plunge yourself into the water at the, just where the waterfall is. There are so many activities to be done here. There is also camping, there is some camping site here. So it is a very nice place for if you like activities. And then it is down there. So we, we were scared by the whole stairs. We were very tired. We've hiked enough for the day. I mean, today we've had a treat. How many waterfalls? Three. Three. Three waterfalls in a day. That was awesome. No. You forgot about the zip line? There's a zip line oh, over the, the, there's River a Sagana. Zip line over River Sagana, just the, over the, the yeah. waterfalls. And they also offer archery? Yes, there is archery. Yes, you, you can just call them and inquire for the prices. But the food prices are fair, I would say, and the food is good, so. Tina, we'll just be passing by, but uh, I would like you to just see how the town looks. I have realized that on this side they sell a lot of pork. There must be a delicacy in this side. Ranch? Oh, okay. 
daylight pia. So guys, we are at Narumoru. This is the town. There are very beautiful Airbnbs around this place. Just go to the internet and you will see. You can see Mount Kenya from this end, but from a distance. You see that this this structure right ahead. It looks like one of those combined harvesters that uh, that we have in this area. They do a lot of farming. There is a lot of um, what do you call it? Horticultural. Yes, there's a lot of horticultural farming around this area. Most flowers that we get, that we export, usually comes from the Nanyuki area. Narumori is one of them. They are, they are usually flowers. They are, there is wheat. Uh, there are so many kind of vegetable and flowers that are usually planted in this area. They are very very big. They are very very big ranches and plantations in this area and I think it's because the weather allows it and some of them also do some irrigation there are some greenhouses here and there so expect to see a lot of that on this road actually a tree restaurant a restaurant on a tree basically and they sell the type of fish that they sell majorly there is the trout so uh, the last time we came scouting here we went to the trout tree and we had an amazing experience We are just coming to see what they offer and what the budget is. Maybe we'll get there and we'll eat fish again. <laughs> This is a curio shop with very unique stuff. Look at what a deer got at 1,000 Kenyan shillings. Don't I look beautiful? It's so beautiful. And then there is this chess board. I like it. I know. Now, I need to give this to a, to not a Kenyan, someone, my fan who's not a Kenyan. I'm told it's called Kitengela glass. Look at how cute this is. This is so cute. Kenya, my land is Kenya. Today I'm in all African. <laughs> so it's literally on a tree. See, the place is literally on a tree. This place is called Trout Tree Restaurant and it's literally a restaurant on a tree that and they serve trout. Now there are a couple of trout, uh, what can I call them, farms? Look at those ponds. Ponds, yeah, they are trout ponds. There are so many. I wonder how many they are. I can count more than 10. And then down there, there is a stream of, there's just like a small stream, like a natural stream. I think this place is loved so much by tourists, but it's somewhere we intend to bring people for those who'd be interested to try out the trout.
so you can have a free tour of the place. If you come with kids, there's a playground for them here. Yeah, we were told there's a, there are some calabas monkeys here. That is one of them. They are couple on the tree. Oh, that's cute. The restaurant is literally the restaurant is literally built around a tree to make it a tree house or a tree restaurant as you wish. So guys whenever you're in Nanyuki you might want to consider staying here the Abadea Abadea Proceed Road cottages. They have the most beautiful cottages ever. I've come here before and I made a video about it so go and check it out and then you will decide whether you like the place because I really really love the place. So guys, during our actual trip, we got to Nanyuki quite late and we could not record much. However, during our pre-visit, we used the same route and here is our experience. Is we are the equator it's one of those places that you must stop whenever you are in Nakuru so we are we are crossing the equator we are going to the north towards the northern part of the equator so we cross at the at, at Nanyuki Nanyuki is one of them there's another one in Maseno so there are a couple of places in Kenya where you can get the the equator you can cross the equator back and forth and you'll get that sign there I, I realized that in Kenya we take it for granted the equators but many men in many countries even including imagine i went to namibia all and i did not see the the it's called the what of capricorn, tropic of capricorn. The, the, the tropic of capricorn i did not see that sign we were this, supposed to see it in namibia yeah just we were supposed before kitman shop but just before kitman shop yes we were supposed to see it but somehow we got there late oh yeah yeah we were traveling at night yes this time when we returned to, Nam to namibia mm -hmm. it is in our bucket list <laughs> we have to <laughs> we have to check it out. So we've crossed the equator. It's always exciting to cross the equator. I don't know. You don't gain anything. You just gain the excitement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right now we are going to Olpajita. We came across some driver who, who drives these tourist trucks. They told us that we cannot get that far, but we told him just wait, watch us. <laughs> and we are going to confirm that we'll get that far. Yes. We like it when people challenge us like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Me, I like it when people tell me you cannot do that now. That is when I'm going to do it. As long as it's morally okay, I'm going to do it. Please welcome to Nanyuki. Nanyuki the town. Oh my god, it's so dusty. What is happening? <laughs> Mount Kenya. Game Ranch. So from Nanyuki, you can access so many national parks and national uh, and game reserves. Old Pajeta. There's another one. Old Jogi, there's Lewa Conservancy. Lewa Conservancy. Yes, from here you can access all that. And Nanyuki, is usu they usually call it, the locals call it Mushawareli. Mushawareli in Swahili means uh, the last stage of the train, right? Yes. The last train stop. Yes, that is what it means. It literally is the last train stop, right? Yes, I think it is. This is where the last stop of the train is. 
you can come all this way with your car like we have come using the main road you can also use a train there's usually a train that brings you this far you get that you pick the train in nairobi the, of course there is a you can come by air there are so many options you also need to know that in, in, in nakuru there are so many air bases there is the british i think it's british army training college or something there are so many barracks around here yes i think our air base is also in in uh, the kenyan air base is also in in nanyuki here is the railway station it is a small railway station but it brings people all the way so at some point you'll come across this a uh, rough road, it's a dirt road, but at least it's well graded. Let's hope it won't get worse than this. <laughs> Someone has just called our car a luxury car and that beer is disputing. I do not take this. This is anything but luxury. Anything but luxury. Yes. But then that person doesn't know what luxury means. Yes. Talk about Range Rover. You have a lovely room, you have a lot of space, you have heated seats. Now Eish. that is luxury. Eish. When you we have grow a sunroof. Up, when we grow up we'll have some luxury cars. Yes. But until then, Pearl will do the, all the work until we see everything that we need to see in this world. <laughs> so guys, we are finally here. Olpajeta Conservancy, Rongai Gate. Olpajeta is at the end of that rough road. There is some camping options. You can come with your own tents. They, they are also providing some tents at a fee. There are also some uh, tent and camps, like the, the ones that have already been set up. They have self-catering facilities in there. So it is a place where you can come and sleep for a couple of days as you do the game drive. They also hire cars. Their cars are, are available. I believe they are the safari cars. They also have an option of, if you would like to have a guide, you also pay uh, some amount. All that information is in this booklet. So when you come and you need a guide, just know it will, it will cost you 2,000 for, for the, four hours. Only. Yes, 2,500 for the guide for four hours only. And guess what? A car with a low clearance like ours can do the safari. So do not worry, your small car can take you around Alpajeta. We are going to our next destination. Let's go. So we are back to Nanyuki town. We met some of our fans. This is a shout out to you, Anne. She was such a sweet lady. Imagine she waited. She saw a car at the parking at the parking lot, and she waited for us until when we came we came out of the supermarket, so that she can say hi. She was like, "I know you guys. We love such encounters." Thank you so much, Anne. So, guys, uh, we're making a few calls here and there about some places that are around this road, so especially Old Jogi and. And Garendare, so that you can know if a car like ours can go there and the charges and all that, so that we don't have to go all the way.
Wow, now this is the magical Kenya. Just how beautiful is this? You can see the silhouette of the mountains from far on both sides of the road. Somewhere in the junction between, on the roads taking you either to Meru or Isiolo. Right now we are going to Isiolo and then we go all the way to Marsabit. But on our way back, we shall use the Meru, the Meru route. Welcome to Isiolo. From now on, you'll be seeing students covering their heads, especially the ladies. They cover their hair because this area is, is most is predominantly Muslims, and also the other the other communities that are not Muslims just culturally cover their hair. We got to Isiolo quite late and managed to pitch our tents and grab some dinner. That was the end of day one. So guys, stay tuned for more episodes to come on this series. If you are new to the channel, kindly consider subscribing, like the video and share it with your friends. And until the next episode, guys, bye! Oh. Mm.